Hello everybody, welcome. Uh, today I'm going to have part three of the Optimal Risky Portfolio. Uh, and But with this one, what we're going to do is that we're going to add in uh, the capital market line uh, for you to see how we can combine the risk-free asset with this risky portfolio and give us a risk return measure that will be superior to holding uh, whether it's the equally weighted portfolio or any single uh, asset that we have in this example. So from the previous two videos, uh, you should be familiar with uh, some of these return measures we have on here. I've excluded the return measures uh, and the price measures, the raw data that we had in the previous two examples just to give us a little bit more space on the screen. So we have uh, Rogers, Barrick, BMO, Loblaws. Uh, those are the four assets from the previous two examples we've gone through, created an equally weighted portfolio provided you with the statistics around those uh, that equally weighted portfolio and we also created this optimal risky portfolio okay and so I mean just remember when we go and do that how we did that is we we're trying to maximize uh, this sharp ratio right we we're trying to maximize the sharp ratio remember the sharp ratio is simply taking the expected return of the portfolio minus the risk-free rate over the standard deviation of the risk-free rate. And just to give you a reminder of how we did that, we went back through uh, data, we went to uh, the data solver, and here on the data solver, remember, we're trying to maximize, right? We're trying to maximize the Sharpe ratio here, subject to the constraint that uh, our P19, right? So our P19, the sum of these holdings here are going to be equal to one right we can't hold and we put in uh, an additional constraint of, of having none of these non-negative right so we put the constraint in of no short selling you could change that if you want but we made it like that uh, just to be simple so we solved that it comes up with a solution uh, and there's the solution there for the sharp ratio right point uh, zero one point zero eight nine now now the question, and we went through this in the previous example too, is well, how much of our our, uh, our portfolio should be held in the risky portfolio and how much should be held in the risk-free portfolio. We went through this calculation down here already, uh, calculating Y depending on our risk aversion rate and the risk-free rate. But here I'm going to show you this in, in more of an, in a graphical context, right? So I've created a new uh, data input table here. Uh, where it says weight in the risk-free asset. I'm going to just put in arbitrary number right now of uh, 0.5 or 50 percent and then we're going to have to calculate what the mean uh, return of our portfolio would be if we held 50 percent of our assets in that risk-free rate, 50 percent of our assets in uh, the risky portfolio and it's this risky portfolio here that we've calculated, right, this optimal risky portfolio. So this would equal um, the weight in the risk-free asset uh, times by uh, the risk-free rate then plus uh, 1 minus uh, the weight in the risk-free asset multiplied by uh, the expected return of the risky portfolio okay and there's the formula here I left that for you guys maybe to see a little bit uh, easier as we go through here so the mean return for a, a portfolio with 50% in the risk-free asset, 50% in this optimal risk portfolio, portfolio would be approximately about 9.6%. Now the standard deviation here, okay, so the standard deviation of this portfolio, we would take one minus uh, whatever we have in the risk-free asset. Remember the risk-free asset uh, doesn't have any risk at all, uh, times by... Uh, the standard deviation of the risky portfolio. So this would give us a standard deviation uh, of a 50-50 split of our assets in the risk-free and in the risk-free portfolio of approximately 4.23%. Uh, now, uh, we're going to go down here and create another data table. We've gone through creating a data table before, but here uh, I've already set up uh, kind of the basics, the structure of the data table. So what you have to do is we're going to vary the weight in the risk-free asset and within the capital market line, what we're going to say we're going to be able to vary uh, from holding all of our assets in the risk-free uh, risk asset all the way down to holding actually no assets in the risk-free asset 
but, but actually borrowing uh, 100% at the risk-free rate. So we go from one to negative one. And here I'm just gonna link back to uh, the previous uh, inputs we have here. So in this first column, I'm gonna say, well, what's the standard deviation? So I'm gonna put the risk, I'm gonna link this back here, and I'm gonna link back to the mean here. Okay, so link those, so I have uh, the risk return profile. Once I have those two linked in there, I'm gonna drop and drag here. I'm gonna highlight this whole box. Then I'm gonna go back up here to what if analysis, go to the data table, and here I'm gonna go to the column input cell. Okay, so in the column input cell, what am I gonna be varying? Well, here I'm gonna be varying the weight in the risk-free asset, so I'm gonna be varying this cell here, right? Whether it goes from uh, one to negative one, zero, all of those notions in between. I press okay, and voila, it's gonna populate uh, what our risk return uh, scenario will be all right, this is risk here, this is return. If I hold all my assets in the risk-free rate, uh, my risk is gonna be zero, uh, my return is gonna be 5%. If I come down here and say, uh, if I don't hold, if I hold none of my assets in the risk-free rate, uh, my my risk is gonna be point, about 8.46%, 47%, corresponds exactly back to here, and my returns is gonna be 14.2 corresponds back the exact here because I'm holding all of my assets in this risk-free rate. But if I go anywhere within here and vary those different uh, scenarios, I can see how my uh, portfolio is, is going to uh, perceive in terms of risk and return. So what I want to do actually though is I want to highlight uh, these two cells here. Okay, so those cells I just highlighted, I want to put this into a graphical format. and We're going to kind of see how uh, different risk return profiles are going to look whether we hold uh, the risk-free asset, whether we hold the risky assets, or we hold an equally weighted portfolio, or if we hold just each individual asset by themselves. So back up here to insert, we're gonna go down here, uh, insert a scatter plot, and here is um, a graph that we can see, and this is uh, what we're gonna to refer to as the capital market line here, okay? So here's the capital market line, and within here, we're gonna see that, uh, I'm gonna just change this up here, called oops so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say uh, CML line okay and within here what this is gonna show you here is that uh, all the way at this far side this is saying hey if I'm gonna you know hold only the risk-free asset my returns are gonna be five and my risk is gonna be zero so the x axis here is in the riskiness of the portfolios you're holding, and the y axis here is the return, right? So as you move up here, move up this line, up this line, this is going to be corresponding to holding zero of the risk-free asset all the way up to holding and actually leveraging uh, your 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 entire uh, holdings by borrowing up to 100%. Uh, in addition to your portfolio holdings. Okay, so all the way up here, this is gonna be a combination of risk-free assets in the risky portfolio that we calculated. Now, let's start to maybe see how um, you know this optimal uh, risky portfolio here, where this corresponds on this line. So if I right-click on here and I select data, uh, first I'm gonna uh, edit uh, this guy here. So I'm going to call this the CML. I'm just going to hit OK. But then I'm going to add. Okay, so I'm going to add uh, a, a new line here. And this is going to be the optimal risky, or, or I'm going to call it the tangent uh, portfolio. Okay, tangent portfolio. And what this is going to be is the X series here of this optimal risky portfolio. So the X values are going to be the standard deviation. Okay, and the Y values are going to be the expected return. I hit OK. And we can see here, we'll go back quickly. We can see that it's actually plotted on this line. And if we quickly look uh, at this uh, portfolio here, this corresponds almost exactly to what we calculated previously, right? If we just come down here, this is probably about 80, uh, about, uh, I would say, close to... 0.0, 0.08 
8.47%, um, standard deviation 8.47%, and about a 14.22% expected return. So that's that's where the optimal risky portfolio uh, lies uh, within the CML line. But let's see where how this um, corresponds to the equally weighted portfolio. So if we go back over here, we're going to select data, we go back and we add, let's say equally weighted portfolio, Oops. equally weighted portfolio. The series X value uh, is going to correspond to the standard deviation there. And the Y value is going to correspond to the expected return. If we hit OK there, we can go back here. Here is the the equally weighted portfolio, this gray dot. Right. So you can see the gray dot in this equally weighted portfolio is actually giving you much more risk with much less return. So any rational investor should pursue some sort of combination of uh, this tangent portfolio here this would be where uh the fish we had the efficient frontier here this is where the efficient frontier would touch this uh cml line here and cr curl back down this is much more preferable than holding this equally weighted portfolio down here that's going to provide you with much more risk corresponding to the return so we can add some uh some data labels here and so we can see this a little bit better so if you add that data label that's going to show you what the expected return of that portfolio that equally weighted portfolio is we format that data label we can actually add the series name there uh, and if we add that series name you can see there's the equally weighted portfolio there go back to this dot here if we add or we add some data labels add labels gives us our expected return there format these labels and we'll add the series name also so we can see those uh, we can see those two series much better now okay so the next portion here uh, is it let's see where some of these assets lie uh, by themselves on here so if we go back again to the graph and we say let's uh, let's let's uh, select data for this graph we're going to add another data series and here we're going to call this RCI so this will be Rogers uh, in our in our uh, example if we go back over here we have uh, Rogers we have the, the standard deviation and the returns for Rogers so the X value is going to be this annual standard deviation the Y series are going to be these returns here we're going to add that we're going to add another guy here we're going to add let's say BMO on here we're going to put uh, the X series will be the annual standard deviation. The Y series will be the returns. We're going to add that guy. And then the last one we'll add is going to be uh, Loblaws. So we'll just label that L. The X series will be this annual standard deviation. And the Y series will be blah we turn we're not going to add the barrack goal with negative return our scale on our, our graph will be a little bit off so we'll skip it for now but you can see here if we if we label these and we add data labels um, for all these guys um, you're going to see that again these are going to provide you with uh, a return and risk profile that's not as um, appealing to a combination of uh, this any combination of the portfolio right the risky portfolio with a combination of of the risk-free asset okay so let's just format these here oops let's go back so right click on these guys here and we're going to format data labels uh, add a series name so there's bmo uh, Format data labels, uh, add series name. There is Rogers there, and if we right click this guy, this should be Loblaws. So format data labels, uh, add series name. So there's the the graph that kind of corresponds and provides you with an example of plotting 
what the CML line would be, right? So this CML line is this combination of the risky portfolio and a risk-free asset corresponding to just holding whether it's equally weighted portfolio or single assets together. So that's an example of, of risk return profile of those assets.